Hey guys, we are back again for another uh, episode. This is actually an update to a uh, previous episode. We're going to be talking about the uh, Mr. FPGA system. Uh, earlier I created a video that kind of showed you how to hook it up uh, to a JAMA cabinet like these candy cabs back here. But unfortunately the JPAC only supported one player. So what I've done is I've actually kind of re-engineered everything using two different encoders. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, how the JPAC worked and, and why it wouldn't support the two player. And the new setup that I have actually running now that does support the actual two player. Let's take a look at it. All right, so here's the JPEG that we were using, and this is pretty straightforward. You have your JAMA edge that goes here, and then pretty much you, you have everything running through that. Um, and this has a built-in actual USB encoder that the, the Mister does play with perfectly fine. The problem is the Mister, when you're, when you're setting up multiple players, it's actually looking for two different USB encoders. So basically one USB controller for every player. So unfortunately, if you have a two-player cab and you're looking to play some of the new CPS1, like Street Fighter games, this isn't going to work for you. If you have a vertical cab where you're just looking to play like one player games or a cocktail or something like that, this is perfect. This actually works really well. It's pretty much plug and play. I added some stuff here for voltage, um, but overall, um, it's great for one player stuff. But if you're looking to do the two player stuff, we have to kind of get over to this guy here. And yeah, this does look crazy complicated, but it's actually not too, too bad. So what we have here is this is the, the Mr. FPGA here, as you can see. Pretty much everything's normal on this guy here. Um, what I've done is I've taken a JAMA uh, finger edge. So basically, you know, one of these little boards you can get off of eBay. It's got everything pinned out and you can kind of see here, um, each one of these holes represents a pin as well on both sides. Um, they're not connected so this bottom side is not connected to the top, which is why you can see on here, I've got uh, some kind of screw holes here on some PCB feet, but they don't, they're not connected because the JAMA edge actually connects here. Um, but basically how this whole thing works is you have um, the jam edge here, right? And what this does is your, your inputs and everything come here from the cabinet. Uh, I have a meter here to kind of show us our five volt. Uh, and then it goes into these guys here. So all the, all the players, this is player one and two. This is actually going into these USB encoders. So this is player one encoder. This is player two encoder, okay? Um, from there, sorry, I'm trying to get my light back on. From there, the USBs go out into the mister like normal, but for six button support, I have this CPS2 harness uh, adapter. So my CPS2 plug goes in here, that goes to the bottom buttons on the cab, that then feeds these wires back into the other side of the encoders here. So this is all player one, and this is all player two. It's basically the same thing as plugging in like a fight stick. Um, you know, this is just basically, you know, this side, or this player goes to the pins for player one, this player goes to the pins for player two, and then these add the kicks to both players. Um, this is the same audio setup as the last video. So how it works is we've got uh, our audio here, it's powered by five volts, which comes off of the edge connector here, where our JAMA voltage goes. And then this is a little different. The, the J-Pack over here actually has everything kind of built in for you. But what I had to do was basically kind of create my own. So this is just a, a VGA, to CGA adapter, it doesn't convert anything. It just basically takes the pins of this and converts it to the old style here. So I've got red, green, blue, ground, and then the, the sync, you actually kind of jump from uh, this pin to this pin to, to make it sync for RGB. Um, and then basically what I have is the video comes out here, it goes to the VGA connector up here on the mister. Um, and that's pretty much everything that I have set up to make it work. So what I wanna do is let me plug this thing in uh, into the cabinet, and I'll kind of show you how it works, and I'll show you how to, how to go through the uh, player one and player two setup. All right, we're gonna try to do this one hand. Let's pull this up here. Uh, we've got a little menu set up. We're gonna go down to uh, define our buttons. So now it's asking for this one, player one side. We're gonna go ahead and do right, left, down, up, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and then start. Now I'm not gonna do a coin button just because I really don't need it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter to, to finish this. Okay, now if I do it again, on player two now, I'm gonna go right, left, down, up, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then start, and again for coin, I'm just gonna hit enter, and I'm done. And now, this is good, so if we hit five, I believe, coins, and you can hear our sound, you see that? And if I hit player two start, so now I have two player. And I'll show you that it works here for some gameplay, one sec. So here we can see Ryu. I 
Well, that's working, and then on player two. There we go. There you go, two player support on the Mr. FPGA. So I just wanted to put a quick little video out for you guys. I will be uh, posting like parts lists and things like that. If you guys have questions on this, please let me know. I did get a lot of questions last time asking about how to get two player with the uh, with the J-Pack. And I've looked and I can't figure it out. And, and talking to some of the people that are kind of involved with Mister, a lot of people think that in order to do that, it would require the rewrite of a lot of cores. And I just don't really see that happening. So for me, rather than trying to figure a way around or a workaround, I just decided to rebuild this with uh, some USB encoders that I had and a $10 VGA to CGA adapter thing. So um, I will post links and everything. If you do have any questions, let me know. And again, I, I still will look at powering everything with the, the cab itself. That's the ultimate goal, just have something that you can pop it in and play all that. But as always, guys, I do appreciate it. Thank you for, for uh, checking out the video, and we'll see you on the next one.